Thank you, Dr. Ramesh Punjani, for another label of fire branding. And this is the state of the art lecture. Thank you, World Congress, for giving this opportunity to interact with you. And I would request you all, before going back from Calcutta, please see Victoria Memorial Hall also. It is beauty. In God, we trust all others must bring data. In next 12 minutes, I will be talking about don't mess with the mesh. Treat mesh as an implant. As far as possible, take all the precautions to prevent infection. And once the infection is there, don't try all the world-class antibiotics, but try to persuade the patient to think that the mesh has to be explanted. I bring greetings from Sar Gangaram Hospital and Bhatia Global Hospital and Endosurgery Institute. The outline of my talk would be about is mesh essential, is mesh necessary, what should be the selection? What is the best plane so that we have the least infection? And what type of mesh will be suitable in that kind of environment, whether it is synthetic or biological or biosynthetic? And what happens if there is a surgical site infection? And some words about mesh explantation. Yes, if the seroma occurs, Please do not jump with the needle and syringe to aspirate this seroma. And all of us, the patients, as well as the surgeons, want that we should decrease the recurrence rate to duck. Till date, we have not been able to do it. And I would request, especially my younger colleagues, to come out of that thought that the, the patient has to be blamed. The mesh has to be blamed. No, surgeon is the most important prognostic factor and he or she has to observe the utmost sterility in the theater because we are using an implant like a cardiac implant, like a orthopedic implant and one has to be very clear that all blame should come to the surgeon. And I would definitely draw the attention of my colleagues on this publication of complications of intraperitoneal mesh techniques for incisional hernia, especially IPOM. And in this, we have seen, these are just not the numbers, but you can see that the seroma, hematoma, recurrent pain, SSI, are of the order of rising from 0.7 to 31.6, for example, and major complications are also known. They are not just for the textbooks or the journals. They are known to have enterocutaneous fistula, mesh infection, adhesions, recurrences. Now, when we are going to place in a mesh, we should be very clear that in which plane the least infection will be there. And all of, all of us in last two decades have learned that yes, if we were placing in the intraperitoneal space, the chances of infection was there. If we are placing the mesh in the sub -cost, uh, in the sublay space, then also, but ultimately, retromuscular space definitely has least chances of infection. There are surgeons, there are open surgeons, I would say, they are still putting the mesh in the only fashion, and our thinking is, one can appreciate the chances of infection of the sublay mesh is of the order of 25 to 40 percent and the chances of large seroma and high recurrences are there and even the mesh can, because if you have to place in a larger size mesh, then the large skin flaps can lead to necrosis also, so one should be careful about it. So I would request especially, if possible, please do not lay the overlay or onlay mesh as far as possible. Try to find out the retromuscular space and then only the chances of 
infection will be less, chances of necrosis will be less, chances of recurrence will definitely less. And again, please do, and I want that this kind of statement should be learned, by, heard by the corporate also, please do not drive these surgeons to know about the latest possible meshes and then ultimately making a mess of it. Our thinking is, lot of meshes had come and lot of meshes have gone back. So we should be very, very clear that we should know whether we are going to use the synthetic mesh or biological mesh, whether the adhesion preventing barrier, barrier is there or not. We should refrain ourselves from using a purely heavyweight polypropylene mesh intraperitoneal because that is the mesh that is going to cause the fistulization, erosion and what not. So our thinking is we should know the God lies in details, devil also lies in details. Whether it is a heavyweight mesh of more than 90 gram per meter square or it is lightweight mesh of between 35 to 50. So what is the exact weight which we are needing to put in the patient that should definitely be known to us. And especially when we are doing the inguinal hernia repairs also, we can mess up. We, if we are using a lightweight mesh versus a heavyweight mesh, we strongly believe the chances of recurrence are definitely less if we are using the heavy, heavyweight or high weighted mesh in inguinal hernia repair also. And we have seen in last few decades that polypropylene mesh is the mesh which all of us are using. EPTFE mesh is not inert as claimed by the corporate and definitely the fibrosis with encapsulation used to occur and we have had the occasion of explanting lot of ETFE mesh and we would not, never recommend now you use the EPTFE mesh. Similarly, polyester also, it creates a local hostile environment and severe fibro fatty reaction. So one should be very, very careful. And again, as Dr. Jignesh had also beautifully said, and Sarfraz is also going to speak about the CT anatomy. So you do not know the anatomy unless you know the CT anatomy. So again, the thinking is we should know that EPTFE mesh can be beautifully seen in this pus and one can always go ahead and ultimately explant both the mesh as well as the tackers so that the patient does not have any discharging sinus later on. And please do not go away with this idea that only eye palm or only other surgeries are having infection. The even the ETAP RS can have the infection. So we should be very, very careful. And when we have to do the explantation, we know it. We can do by open method or we can do by laparoscopic method. For example, in this situation, you can see that the surgeon had placed in a 3D mesh without fixing and obviously all the precautions he must, he or she must have taken, but lot of infection is there and one has to explant the mesh. Again, when we are explanting the mesh, take utmost care that we use the endo bag and take the mesh out. Similarly, never ever think that these words are only for the textbooks. They are there. There are patients. And I am grateful to Dr. Abhay Dalvi. He himself had given beautiful two slides in which he had implanted this mesh long time, 12 years back on the on sublay and ultimately patient came at the age of 73 and this mesh was coming out. She never wanted any surgery. She never wanted had, had any other complication. Only the mesh was cut and the patient did well. And this kind of one can see the intestine loop and one can see the mesh. So these things are known and if one should definitely make an attempt that we do not overdo or underdo. And we all, all of us know that Center for Disease Control and Prevention have divided this wounds into class 1 to class 2, 3 and 4. So one should always decide that, for example, there is a strong recommendation or not. If there is a strong recommendation in class 1, one can use, one should use the synthetic mesh in class 2 also. But there is a weak recommendation, grade 2 recommendation, 2C recommendation for primary repairs in class 3 and query biological mesh in class 4. 
and when the patient is having incarcerated or strangulated hernia one should be very very careful that we are not going into place in a mesh because the toxicity is there toxic fluid is there and that can lead to challenges so once we have got the ct scan done once we are going in we can do it by laparoscopically if you are comfortable if you are not then open surgery also one should go in and explant the mesh so that ultimately we do not leave the infected portion inside we do not leave the pus we do not leave the mesh and and our tackers tacks so that ultimately the patients are definitely better and please do not think now in this open mesh plasty had been done 6 months back and one can see the discharging sinus getting the ct scan this was 15 days back only and one can appreciate that once we have to go in for explanting the open mesh then we can take it and henny ford had also shown in his data that 48% of the ssi is there in complex open ventral hernia repairs so one should be very very careful about it i am not giving these figures just to frighten you but these things are known so one should be very very careful and there are situations lot of such cases are there in which for example ipom or e open or laparoscopic surgeries have already been done and one has to remove them explant them but make sure that we do not leave anything and fistulization is also known so we should be very very careful and just running for next one minute that please do not aspirate the seroma and don't allow the ultrasonologist also to aspirate the seroma because ultimately that can convert it into an abscess and that can lead to problems if it is a seroma which is large size then one has to go in for explanting the mesh also so we should come out of the denial mode we should have a low threshold for getting the ct scan low threshold for getting the mesh explantation and only techniques have higher complications rate and the lesson of the story is complications teach surgeons one of the most important surgical skill and that is resilience thank you very much thanks a lot for your kind attention excellent as always pravin any questions from the audience yeah, one question i uh, want to ask uh, in all cases of infection uh, when you are explanting the uh, explanting the mesh uh, after that is it always necessary to uh, put mesh next time second time or or repair it is necessary after i would i i would say that never ever dare to put the mesh at the same no, time no no talking about time, but, they get but later on uh, later wonderful on. wonderful and another answer is answer to you is that before even embarking on explantation of the mesh discuss with the patient i will remove the mesh i will not put in the mesh at the same time later on example maybe one month four months four years 10 years if you develop hernia then go in for placing the mesh not otherwise many many times we have also seen so much of fibrosis occurs the yeah. hernia hernia is not seen even yeah in inguinal hernia i seen a lot of cases where uh, mesh is uh, not necessary again. not necessary at again. all afterwards yeah uh, parveen one question to you uh, once you have thought that it is a seroma and you wait and wait but if it does not resolve i think it is good idea to do a sonography and find out that it is not a organized hematoma rather than seroma absolutely but again there is a rider which i always tell my patients that he is doing ultrasonologist shove in the needle in your angular region because most of the times amar or your enemy surgeon also co neighboring surgeon also he will also put in the needle and and aspirate and then say i told you na don't go for the open laparoscopic surgery he does laparoscopic surgery and that this is the blood one has to take it out and he has infected the seroma and it has formed an abscess yes one yeah, second Jignish. thing is just a second ja, uh, second thing is that always carry on telling the patient that it takes 6 weeks we get the ultrasound it takes 6 more weeks it takes 6 more weeks and then once most of the 
times it is settled. 90% of the times it settles agreed, down. Agreed. Agreed. But if it is always the hematoma, you'll have to go down and uh, exercise. Yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Sir, uh, excellent talk as always, but I'll probably be happy if you can next time include the mesh explantation classification because the reason is we recently had a couple of years back removed that mesh bilateral TAP 10 years patient at the mesh inside because every time he used to go to a surgeon, someone will remove a tag, someone will remove a part of the piece of the mesh. So me and Sarfaraz, have, we have published the first mesh explantation classification of the world. And it's published in Hernia Journal based on the TNM classification. I would request each one of you to refer to that. Talk to me or my patient come to you based on the classification. And second is, sir, I would be very happy, you know, if you we can touch upon the our paper of 52 cases of mesh explantation. Majority of them are atypical. So one clear message to everyone, there is no role of three weeks, four weeks, six weeks of linear zoded. These patients up to one year of treatment and the standard drugs which work in India in the patient linear zoded, moxifloxacin and clarithromycin. So please don't give this three weeks, four weeks of placebo treatment. Your patients will keep coming back again and again. Thank you very much. Thank Two slides you. added on. Right. Thank so you. great message which Parveen gave, which I would like to. How many of you do an only repair for hernia? Please raise your hand. So I'm very happy, very few. He has been see, telling repeatedly that infection, seroma, SSO, all are more for only. So I think all of us must move to the sublay. That's what I right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Parveen. Thanks a lot. Thank yeah. you.